In this video, I will be doing a quick TBC 580 product overview. We will look at the enhancements and update made in the latest release of TBC 580. But let's now have a look at the new enhancements and updates for TBC 580. First thing you'll notice, we do have a new logo and splash screen. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Here we go. New logo and splash screen for 580 going forward. Okay, there we go. Let's now have a look into the new enhancement. First one we'll look at is the new scan to object enhancement. You will now be able to select multiple 3D objects to do a scan inspection to instead of just the one object as previously. Let's quickly open up a project. I will just be briefly discussing these updates and enhancements. If you want in detail workflow guides, please have a look and follow our YouTube channel as well as on LinkedIn. I will post videos showing these functionalities completely and in, in, and, and in, in depth. Okay, as you can see, we have a scan done on this bridge. And for the scan inspection, when you go to point clouds, you will see the enhancement of multiple 3D objects. Just give it a name quickly for now. Do the 3D object and then when you go under select, Previously, you could only select the one object. Let's just switch off the point cloud quickly. There we go. You could only select one object. But at the bottom, you will see there is now an internal select mode next to your rectangle select and your polygon select. When you select that internal, press down control, you will now be able to select multiple 3D objects. And all of them will then be used for your scan inspection when you run it. So that's an enhancement on the scan inspection functionality. Next up, let's jump into the extraction part of it. Just quickly open up a new project here. There we go. Let's drag this in quickly. There we go. So for the point feature extraction enhancements, you'll see there is a few additions that has been made, for, especially for geometry and then for manual extraction. Let's go into 3D view quickly. So in this point cloud, you can see we do have manuals, some trees, poles, and signs. If you then go to your extract point feature option, remember it's always best to have your point cloud classified when using this extraction features. You will see the extract point feature command looks a bit different now. You have your data extraction and then extraction type. When you click on it, you will see you have five different options now. Tree, post, sign, manual from laser scanning data and manuals from photogrammetry. Let's click on tree first of all. When it opens up the command, you'll see you have some setting options where you can then decide where the trunk diameter should be measured from. You can select what you require there. You can manually or automatically then allow the software to extract the information. As you can see, it asks to make sure that the correct point cloud is visible when using this command. Same then for posts. Again, you have some settings options here to say where the diameter needs to be measured from. And the same when you go to signs. Settings again, the diameter where it can be done from. You can add feature codes as well. It will extract the information and you can map it accordingly. Please have a look at my YouTube video that will be posted soon about how to use this functionality. Same for the manuals from laser scanning data. Again, you can automatically extract them, extract the manuals, and there is a confidence level so you can play around with that to make sure it does not miss any of the manuals and it doesn't give you too many false positives. Again, I will have a video available for this showing you the in-depth workflow for this extraction option. That covers the geometry enhancements for 
point cloud extraction features. Next up, we will have a look at the Kogo functionality that has been enhanced. Open up the job here quickly. So in the create Kogo functionality on the survey, you will now see there is an addition. I'll just create a blank one like that quickly. On the Kogo, you will see you have an add from selected line work, meaning that if you have line work, but no actual physical points or parcels generated, you can click on that and just simply click on add line work. And the command will add the line work plus the points for you on the corners. As you can see, we have added create lines and create points for the specific parcel. So there you go. Quick and easy to do that. When you go into map check, another nice enhancement is I'll quickly just select that one. Just create it. There you go. Now you can actually change the name of the parcels. So there I can say the parcel name should be parcel one. And if I then click on that specific name, it updates the name to parcel one. Okay, easy and simple to do, and we'll have some videos available looking into that a bit further in depth. Again, we can also move this along a little bit. There we go. If you want to, here we can move the text to fit into your parcel as well. Easy to do, and there we go. Another enhancement in the Create Kogo functionality is when you have a parcel inside an existing parcel. So let's quickly create a parcel inside here. We'll choose the functionality to create the line with. What you will notice is you also now stay in that functionality. You don't have to go back and select it again. Like in the previous version, you can now just continue. And only when you need to change the type of line work you want to do, you need to fix that up. Sorry, there, I broke that part there. Let's just quickly fix that. There we go. And there we are. Now, when we close this and we go, uh, sorry, don't have to close that. And we go to map check. Let's just select that one and that one. <coughs> Now, if we create the parcels, you will now see we have two parcels available. And when you go into map check, it will actually now exclude the inner parcel from the calculation of the outer parcel. So it will nest the inner parcel out of the inner parcel. So you can have two separate areas where it excludes the inner parcel. As soon as the map check report has been generated, I'll quickly show you what that looks like. So this is a nice little functionality where you want to exclude the inner parcel from the outer boundary one and have individual measurements. So as you can see, we go there, that shows you the small inner parcel. And then when you go to the outer one, you will see it shows you the line work for the outer one as well as the inner parcel. And then if you look at the actual map display that it gives you, you will see it has now excluded the inner parcel. So there is another nice enhancement into the Coco functionality. That covers just briefly some of the updates and enhancements in TBC 580. Please keep a lookout on our YouTube channel as well in LinkedIn. We will have some more videos showing in-depth workflows of the enhancements and updates that was made to TPC 580.